Hey, we're working on season 17 of the Woodsmith Shop, and one of our featured projects is a steamer trunk. And there's a lot to like about building this as a standalone project, but there are some cool features about it that you may not see first off. One of those is that we have a curved top to it. And the reason is, you can't set anything on top of it, which is a problem with a lot of blanket chest designs. Stuff gets piled on top, and then you never get at the stuff that's down inside the chest itself. Now, if we open this guy up here, you can see that there is plenty of storage space inside, another key feature. But there's also a downside here. There's plenty of storage space. So that stuff is liable to get lost here unless we have some kind of an organizational system. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a sliding tray. It takes up about half the size of the inside here, just a few inches deep, but it's gonna ride on some runners so you can position it anywhere you want. You can keep some smaller items up in the tray, slide it out of the way, and you still be able to get to the stuff down below, or even pull the tray out altogether and be able to get at really bulky items that you have stored inside. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make up some cleats for that tray to ride on. Now, when it comes to building the tray itself, we have some leftover white oak from the construction of making the steamer trunk. So I'm gonna use that and some simple joinery over at the table saw to put this together and have it look sharp. All right, to get things started here, I cut a couple of maple cleats that the tray is gonna slide on here. Now this is a little departure from the original plans and it simplifies things because we're just using some square leftover stock that we had. Feel free to use anything that's a nice solid hardwood. So what I'm gonna do is run a bead of glue along one edge there and that's what's gonna hold it in place. Now I've marked a line on the inside of the steamer trunk here to show where I want the top edge of that cleat to rest. I'll get it lined up and then I'm gonna use a pin nailer to tack it in place. Now that's just gonna hold it in place while the glue dries and that's what's really gonna be supporting the weight of the tray. I'll get this other one attached, then we're over to the table saw to start on the joinery for the tray. All right, here are the parts for our tray. I have a pair of sides that are made out of half inch oak and then they're gonna be these two ends that will connect to them. You notice that the ends are significantly taller. We're gonna shape that into an arc that matches the top of our steamer trunk, and then we're gonna create some handles in there later on. And the tray parts, again, with a little departure from the plans, is I'm gonna to use tongue and dado joinery to connect these pieces. So we'll cut dados on the front and back, and then matching tongues on the handles. So in order to get this started, I'm gonna cut the dado first. So I have a quarter inch wide dado installed in the table saw and I've raised it so that it's a, about a quarter of an inch, about half the thickness of our work pieces here. And then the rip fence is positioned so that the inside edge of that dado is gonna be on the inside face of our two end pieces. So you can see what I've done is I'm using that piece as a guide and I can just feel it with my fingertip that we're flush, the outside edge of the tooth is flush with that face of our end pieces there. So with everything set up, I'm gonna cut those dados, one on each end of both of our front and back pieces. I'm gonna leave things set up here like this because this setting is gonna work also for cutting a groove that will hold the bottom of our tray in place as well. All 
All right, the other half of the joint is to form a tongue on the ends of our two end pieces that'll fit into that dado. Now, here you're gonna be going right off of both the workpiece and the existing dado that you have here to dial it in. Rulers and measurements aren't really gonna help. What you're looking for is for that tongue to be a nice press fit into the dado It's a little tight here, but we're getting there. And I want it to be as close to bottoming out and that dado as much as possible. So that's where you'll adjust the rip fence for the length of the tongue and the height of the dado blade to dial in the fit of the tongue on the into that dado. So I have everything all set up here and I'll just cut the tongues on the other three ends here. All right, with the joinery complete on the tray parts, we can now move into the function and comfort of it. And on these two end pieces, we wanna add some handholds to be able to lift the tray out easily. Also adds a little design flair to it. Now those handholds start as a pair of end holes that we're gonna drill on our ends. So I have those marked to be centered on our end pieces and we'll set up a one inch Forstner bit here at the drill press and the fence to keep everything aligned. Now the second stage in creating our handle is clearing out the waste between our two holes. And we're gonna do this in two steps. And the first is to just cut away the bulk of the waste, which I'm doing here at the bench using a jigsaw. A couple of key points here. You don't want this piece flopping about and vibrating where it's gonna make the cut harder to control. The other thing you wanna avoid is cutting into your bench top. So make sure you're well clear of the surface of your bench before you get started. Otherwise, it's just a matter of staying to the inside of these two layout lines. All right, the last step in making our handhold slots is to clean up those edges and bring them into alignment with the edges of our circles that we drilled out. To do that, I've taped on a couple of guide strips, just some scrap that I had laying around, right on those layout lines. Then I can set this over the top of a flush trim bit here in the router table, and then just buzz each side of the handhold to clean it up. It's a pretty simple process and it goes really quick, and you'll be surprised on how smooth and even these handholds are gonna be. After taking care of the handholds, the next step is to give the ends a little shape and some character. So I've drawn in an arc along the top edge that I'm gonna cut here at the bandsaw. The key thing is where the arc starts and stops because you wanna make sure that it's not gonna dive down below the level of the two front and back pieces. So stay to the outside of the layout line as you're cutting and then as we refine the shape back at the bench, we'll work right down to that line. Now the bandsaw leaves a pretty rough edge on the curve here. And what I wanna do is transition that from a rough cut curve to something that's smooth and even. And then we also wanna work down to our layout line on the end so that the end transitions really smoothly into the front and back of our tray. My tool of choice for this is actually a block plane. While you normally would think of that as a flat surface tool or for trimming, it does a great job on these gradual outside curves like this. There's a little technique involved in it. What you wanna do is apply enough pressure right in front of the blade so that you keep the blade engaged. You don't have to worry about the tip of the block plane getting engaged. And then your other hand is just kind of driving it forward. And again, I'm not too concerned about the layout lines, which are on this side of my workpiece here. Instead, I'm just gonna feel the surface with my fingers 
and see if I can detect any lumps and bumps or any flat spots that I want to address. From there, it's a matter of just test fitting it with your front and back pieces to make sure that this curve ends right at the height of that without diving down below it. Once I get done with this, we're ready to assemble the tray. All right, after some final sanding on all of my parts here, I'm ready to bring things together. And with the tongue and dado joinery, there's a specific order to avoid kind of getting stuck with a part that doesn't go in right. So what I'm going to do is run a bead of glue in the groove on one of the front and back pieces here. And that'll hold the, the bottom. Then I'm going to do the same thing, bead of glue in the dados. And then a little bit on here. Same thing on this other side. Brush it out just to be neat. Now what I'm going to do is put the two ends in, fit those into the dados. And then I can add the bottom. There we go. Now I'll do the same thing with the opposite side. Lay it flat here. Now we can add clamps. Going across the ends just to pull up the joints so they're tight. There we go. In just a little bit, we'll be able to take the clamps off, set it in place on the trunk. Well, here's the moment of truth. Well, not really. I tried it out before cameras started rolling. But you can see how the tray fits in place here. Slide it around to get at whatever you want down in the bottom of the steamer trunk or move it wherever you want. This is a great project to add organization, not only to a steamer trunk like this, you can use these same techniques and approach to add a organizational tray like this to other blanket chests or other large chests that you have, a toy chest. Even deep drawers and dressers can sometimes benefit from a little bit more organization. So if you're interested in the plans for the steamer trunk and the tray that goes inside it, you can get it all at woodsmithplans.com. Also, if you're a Woodsmith Unlimited member, you get six free downloads every year, and this steamer trunk can be one of them. Sign up at woodsmith.com. We'll see you next time.